Hey friends, welcome back to Mimi's Mix Bag. Thank you so much for stopping back by. And if this is your first video of mine and like what you see, would love for you to hit that subscribe button. I want to start off by apologizing for the sound of my voice. I sound a whole lot worse than I really am. But I've got some coffee in me and I actually can make some sound with my voice. Today I'm bringing you a last minute Christmas gift or... If you don't think you could use it for Christmas, this would make a great Mother's Day gift. Super inexpensive, a lot of bang for your buck. I am going to be using a thrifted canvas. This is one I've had in my stash. It's a 12 by 12. It's going to work perfect. You could also just get an inexpensive picture frame from Walmart. Any kind of frame will work. All right, I've got a piece of cardboard that matches my frame and a piece of individual scrapbook paper. What I'm going to make is using some Scrabble tiles, interlock all of our family names to create a really cute wall decor. I'm sure you've seen these on Pinterest for several years. They Some people even do a wall size, but I just wanted to make a small one that I could hang anywhere I wanted to. All right, so let me tell you, the, the star of the show is going to be Scrabble tiles. A couple years ago, I thrifted a big Ziploc baggie of these letter tiles, but let me just tell you that you don't have to have a Scrabble game. You can buy these lettered tiles at Dollar General all the time. You get about 60 for $3 and all the craft stores sell them too. They're called alpha tiles. There's d different names. Even some Dollar Trees even carry these little lettered tiles. They shouldn't be too hard to find. Now your hanger on your wall decor can just be a ribbon, string, but I thought it would be cute to do the beaded hanger. And then I'm going to probably put a little bow accent. Since my background paper is kind of a neutral shiplap. I just went and cut some little pieces of neutral ribbon that I had, cream and white and beige and black that all coordinate with my background paper. All right, so the first thing I need to do, since I, mine's not just a regular picture frame, I'm gonna go ahead and take a staple remover and remove my canvas off of my frame and I'm gonna paint it black. I'm gonna let that dry. All right, now I'm gonna work on my piece of cardboard and my background paper. Now you're going to need to trim your cardboard the size of your frame so that you can attach it later. But like I told you, mine was 12 by 12 and mine just happens to be a piece of cardboard from a paper pad. It worked out perfect. All right, I'm going to take a glue stick and attach my scrapbook paper to my cardboard. And now I'm just going to play around with my Scrabble tiles and kind of dry fit where I'm going to put the names and how they interlock with each other. All right, I've got all my letter tiles laid out here, and I have just a few little pointers for you. Now, this is probably the most time-consuming part of this project. A couple days ago, I pulled out all the letters I needed and just started playing around with how I could interlock the names. And with my frame being an even 12 by 12, this is what... I thought was most visually appealing. Now, if you have an eight by 10 frame, your, your crossword may need to be a little longer than it is wider, but I was trying to get the most square look that I could get. And, and it really helped me having this shiplap lines in this background paper. So I would encourage you to find something with plaid that's got some crisscross lines in it where you, it will help you keep things lined up and straight before when you start gluing them. You'll see that this my name up here, the Mimi, really wouldn't interlock with anything. So I just put it at the top, just like a typical crossword puzzle would do. Sometimes you just have an oddball word that won't interlock. So keep that in mind. If you, find, if you have, you know, a family name like that. But I really like this shape. So what I'm going to do now is just carefully glue one tile at a time, trying to keep it as straight as possible using the lines of my scrapbook paper as my guide. All right, as you can see, I've got all my letters hot glued on there now and just trying to take out some of the little hot glue strings. But I, like I said, I just kept in mind trying to keep it as centered as possible. Now, my frame is dry now and I took a little sandpaper and just roughed around the edges just to distress it. I'm probably going to put a little satin clear on this just so it's not so dried out. But I'm going to flip my frame over and my board and I'm going to staple it on the back. That's why it's so important that your cardboard is already cut 
perfectly for your size frame. So I'm going to take a heavy duty stapler and staple all around the back. All right, I've got everything attached to the frame. Now I'm going to string up about 12 inches of the unfinished wood beads. I think the beads kind of tie in with the creamy colored tiles, so that's the reason I'm going to just leave my beads unfinished. And I'll staple the wire to the back of the frame. All right, my last little embellishment, I'm going to put a little bow on the side of it, and I'm going to do a scrappy bow is what I call it, because all you need is about 10 pieces of ribbon and anything goes, as long as it coordinates with your paper. So I've got two of five different kind, and there's no right or wrong. I'm just gonna crisscross them like this and just layer it up. I tried to pick some neutrals that matched my scrapbook paper, just like that. I'm gonna go ahead and put the black so it'll show in there, but it won't be on top. And then I'm gonna put this little burlap kind on top. I'm gonna take a piece of jute twine, cinch it in the center, and that's gonna make my bow. I'm going to hot glue it on my frame, and then I'll be ready to hang it up and show you. All right, friends, I have it hanging here in my entry hall where the lighting is good. Just a couple notes for you. If you decide to do the beaded hanger, always use an even number of beads so that it will split in the center when you get ready to hang it. Now, with these tiles being so neutral, no matter where you get them, you could do this to fit anyone's decor. You could use a gold picture frame, a more glamorous type of scrapbook paper. The bow is strictly optional. I just wanted the kind of rustic farmhouse look, but I just couldn't be more pleased with it. This is such an adorable gift for maybe $5 and an hour's worth of work. And I think any mother or grandmother would love this for grandkids' names or whatever you can come up with. So I hope you enjoyed this project. Keep this in mind even for Mother's Day in a few months. Hope you enjoyed it. I'll be back in a few days. Bye-bye.